Hey people, it is Friday, February the 25th, and the time is 8.39 in the evening. And I'm here at Union Station and I just picked up Megan. Hello, it's my cutie Kyle. <laughs> and we're going to walk through downtown, heading towards my place. And it's currently minus 7 degrees outside, but feeling a bit colder due to the wind chill. Oh, so, so good. Megan just told me how happy she was to be back in Toronto. Yeah. That she, pref yeah. that this is home to her and Guelph is not home. It is a lovely feeling. It's a lovely feeling, yeah. So here we are, Front Street. I got this little crossbody purse and it's the most amazing thing because it's just big enough for my phone and my cards and my mask and then it doesn't like get in the way and I can just like hang out there around my neck when I'm walking and it's amazing. I mean I have crossbody bags and I've used them before but like this is the first time I've really used one on a regular basis and I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. That's my story about purses. <laughs> I'm sure that's very interesting to you. <laughs> and all that's people. the first time that purses have been discussed on my channel. I'm sure it yeah. is. <laughs> yep. That would not shock me at all. I'm certain that is the case. So we're going to make our way over to Young Street. And then we'll walk north along Young to Dundas. And henceforward to your cozy, cozy apartment. Yep. I'm so excited for that Sephora to open at Union. Are you? Yeah. Because yeah. so like now I can buy my face cream immediately when I get off the train <laughs> instead of having to make a special trip to the Eaton Center to do it. It's just proof that there's still a little bit of light left in this world. <laughs> Bay Street. I feel like I've done lots of videos around in and around Union Station lately, but yeah. but in that case, one more can't really hurt now, can it? No, nope, that's right. <laughs> Your beard is so epic. Oh, that's right. I have a beard now. Yes, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I love the beard. I like a good beard on a man. <laughs> Sidewalks. You know, you really take that for granted. And then I moved to Guelph and they don't do anything to the sidewalks ever. So for the last two months, there's been a literal skating rink on my street. And it's like, where is the city? Why do they pay taxes? Why, why is there no salt on these sidewalks? And it's very annoying. On the other side of that coin, though, your boots or shoes get all gross and stained with salt. It's true, yeah. but you can yeah. wash them. Yeah, but every day, I mean. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's nice to walk without like having to use ice picks. Yeah. Well, after that big blizzard, tons of streets around Toronto were still skating rinks and snow banks, you know, there was no effort made to clear them whatsoever. Yeah, I remember that. I was here yeah. the week after the blizzard. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And like we could not walk and on the sidewalk. Yeah. It was just like this tiny little narrow strip of barely passable right. sidewalk that you had to navigate. Yeah. Today's snowfall didn't really amount to all that much by the looks of it. Maybe five centimeters. Like the sidewalks are just totally clear again, so it just all melted away. Yeah, I'm surprised that there isn't more snow on the sidewalk. I was expecting to like, I was definitely expecting some slush. Yeah, but I guess it just wasn't I enough. No wasn't enough snow, oh, and that's yeah. okay with me. It was just enough to make a couple of videos while it was still snowing and everything looked all nice. 
road, which is kind of ideal. Yeah. And then, you know, after the filming's done, so is the snow. Right. That's yeah. how it works. <laughs> That's how it should always be. <laughs> exactly. I was telling my Oma today that it should snow every year between November 15th and January 2nd. All the snow just immediately melts and it's like 20 degrees <coughs> and spring starts. <laughs> That's just me how it is. <laughs> snow is just a Christmas decoration yeah. and then it's gone. <laughs> That's how that works. Yeah, I'd have no problem with that. Right? I think most people would be okay with that. If only snow was democratic. Majority rules. <laughs> so now we're heading north on Young Street. Definitely feels good to get a walk too. Yeah, it doesn't feel all that cold really. Like yeah. the wind isn't really much of a factor right so now. Bad. The buildings are blocking most of it. Muzak. Muzak, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wellington Street. That's why I cried. No more turning. There we go. So tomorrow the plan is to go to the distillery district? Yes. Yeah? That's right. And I will wear my things. Yep. Actually my things, plural, because there are many. There are many? Yeah. <laughs> there are many. <laughs> I made a muff to go with my outfit. Have I showed you it yet? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Well, I'll show you the outfit. It's pretty cool. It's like made with rabbit fur and it's lined with wool so it's super warm and cozy and then I put a secret pocket on the inside so that I can put my phone and my presto card in the pocket ah. and carry it around yeah I like it quite a bit yeah Not all that busy right now for a Friday night. Okay. Yeah. I have a feeling a lot of people are at home glued to their TVs. Yeah. Yeah. And I've kind of noticed it on my channel. There's a bit of a bit of a, a dip in views the last few days. Oh, because everyone's watching the news. Yep. Disaster unfold. Yep. Yeah. I've been glued to the news too, just like constantly, constantly watching it. It's King Street. A 
though. I have to say, the World War III memes are pretty funny. <laughs> Comic strips That's true. They and did and cartoons That's true. that sort of did the same job as the memes. memes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I guess memes have replaced comic strips, kind of. Thing. Yeah. Let me know if I'm walking too fast. <laughs> I, I know I do that without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're kind of charging the Yep. <laughs> I mentioned this in a previous video, how I keep hitting every red light. Yeah, because you like start out in a cycle and then it just yeah. keeps going. And like, unless you radically change your walking pace, there's nothing you can do about it. I know. Like you either have to <laughs> speed up to a crazy amount or slow down to a ridiculous amount, you know? Yep. Neither of which is... Feasible. Yeah, like, yep. so you're just kind of stuck. Yeah, we're in the red light cycle. Yep. And other times I'll hit every green light. It's just the luck of the draw, you know? Like, <laughs> That's right. Like, what time did I start compared to where's the next intersection compared to my regular walking speed? That's what. I wonder if there's an equation. Makes it or breaks out. it. Oh, I'm sure there is, yeah. There might, there might be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the speed of walking times. I mean, they set up the lights to to make traffic flow as, you know, as free-flowing as possible, so they work it out for car travel. Right. I'm sure they could do it for pedestrians as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. It would be kind of nice if they just, like, shut down downtown to drivers, and it was just for pedestrians and cyclists. Well, they did do that in the early 1970s. It's called the Young Street Mall. I think it was at least a couple of summers that the whole street was a pedestrian mall. That's so cool. Not the entire street, but like the stretch between maybe Queen and College. I'm not exactly sure. Like a good stretch of the main part of downtown Young. Yeah, that's like a decent stretch of the city there. I wonder why they stopped. You know, it was a bit of a fad at that time in the early 70s for cities to do that. Oh. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Because Ottawa still has that. And then, yeah, some of them made it permanent. Yeah. But Toronto didn't. But some of those permanent pedestrian malls didn't really work out for the best either, you know. And some of them got reverted back to car traffic again after like 20 or 30 years of being a pedestrian mall just because they the streets just it just didn't pan out the way they thought it would right like the spark street mall in ottawa is not all that successful that's so bad like especially in 2021 because we should 
should be divorcing ourselves from cars. Yeah. You know, like, we should be, especially with like energy prices going up and like, you know, we should be like decoupling ourselves from like, Yeah. Cars. Well, there, there are plans to make Young Street more pedestrian friendly though. I mean, not they're not going to completely block it off to car traffic, but they're going to reduce the number of lanes. I think from four lanes now down to two lanes. They're going to widen widen the sidewalks. And they're going to add bike lanes right down in, into this part of Young Street. That's awesome. And add more street trees and things like that. That is fabulous. I love that. Yeah, that's, this is a plan that's been in the works for a while now. There's one part of downtown Guelph that they block off in the summers too. They started doing it during COVID so that restaurants could have space for outdoor dining. And they blocked off like a huge part of downtown Guelph. And it was only for pedestrians, but it was awesome. Yeah. Like, and it looked really pretty. Like they decorated it, they put lights out at night. They did like, like they had fountains, they had like lovely cobblestone bits of road. It was really nice. Yeah. I hope they keep doing that. Well, when I was a kid growing up in North Bay, they blocked off Main Street and turned it into a pedestrian mall in the summer. Yeah, cities need to do stuff like that. Pokemon cards. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if some kid dropped them. <laughs> or maybe some adult. Probably some adult. <laughs> maybe some maybe some 32 year old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah. We love Pokemon. We grew up with that shit. Yep. Harry Potter also. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Every millennial knows their Harry Potter house. Yeah. Here's more here. Do you recognize any of these? No, these are all the new Pokemon. Oh, okay. Which are like very uncool. Yeah. I'm a Pokemon purist. Yeah, I don't know any of these ones. This isn't the OG 150. Yeah. Yeah, like any, okay, any millennial watching this will understand what it means to be a Pokemon purist. And it's like <laughs> the original 150 Pokemon that we grew up with. And those are like the only Pokemon as far as we're concerned. Because then in later years, they came out with like all these new ones and they just weren't the same. And it just was like hard to keep up with, so. It's still littering the sidewalks. I know. It's... Is that a jinx? Oh my god, it's a jinx. <laughs> That's so funny. What's the significance of a jinx? Um, a jinx is like a psychic type Pokemon. And it's kind of a humanoid form. Ah. And it puts like spells on you. Like it's big. It wasn't really an attack Pokemon, it was more of a defense Pokemon, so it would like disable its enemies and then like put a spell on them called Hypnosis. Yeah. That was kind of what it was known for. And Hypnosis would like basically confuse your rival so that it would end up attacking itself with its own like powers instead of the rival. So yeah, I mean it was pretty cool. There's more here. Oh my god, what is this? How did this happen? I don't know, he just like, well look, it's a shiny, but it's not a shiny that I know. Yeah. Yeah, the original, the original one is that. My brother had a Game Boy Color, like in the 90s slash early 2000s, and we used to play Pokemon on it, and we would share an account and like each take turns trying to like beat the game basically. And I was always into like the water and fire type Pokemon, but my brother liked the grass types. So we would always argue over like which Pokemon to start with because at the beginning of the game you got like your choice of three. So he always wanted to start with Bulbasaur. But I was like, Bulbasaur is lame. Let's start with Charmander because then we'll get a Charizard. And everyone knows that Charizard is the coolest. 
So yeah, that's my story about Pokemon. I wouldn't say everyone. No. Well, everyone, knows. <laughs> everyone who was born in the late 1980s, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> about at Young and Dundas. Yeah, they're all the way up here. Look at this. What is this? We started seeing them down below Queen Street, and now we're almost at Dundas, and they're still littering the sidewalk. What is this? Well, if you find an Articuno, let me know. <laughs> well, the breakdancer guy has his music playing, so <laughs> let's cross the street. Because one time his music got me a copyright claim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though I didn't recognize it as something that I should think would get me a copyright claim, it did. <laughs> it was not a recognizable tune. It was just a, a beat, like kind of like what he's playing right now, right? Exactly. So I was like, well, that's nothing, but nope, it was something. <laughs> it was definitely, it was definitely something. So there we are, Dundas Square. Ignore the music. Yeah, ignore the music. Mm -hmm. So now is when we start heading east. Remember when we came by here and saw the naked bike parade? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was fun. Yeah, world naked bike ride day, yeah. I think. And it was all men. <laughs> it was like no women in the naked bike parade. Oh, there was a few women. Yeah, there was a few. Not yeah. a lot. Like, a maybe like women. three or four, and then all the rest were, were dudes. Yeah. So now we're crossing Victoria Street. Is that Victoria Street? Crossing it. Oh, crossing. Well, <laughs> yeah. I said we're stopping. I was like, oh Dundas Street East, so we're officially in my neighborhood now. I sort of count Young Dundas Square as being my neighborhood. 
It's sort of like the sort of like the westernmost limits of my neighborhood. Yeah. There's my local burrito boys. That is an institution. Yep. They know me there. Yep. I was quite honored when burrito boys started following me on Instagram. <laughs> You do give them a lot of free air time. Yeah. <laughs> so, the least they can do is follow you on Instagram. Yeah. And give me a free burrito every week. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> They're that burrito boys. Free burrito for the 10th <laughs> We should start a movement. Right? Yeah. And this place is always busy. There's usually a line up though. I'm surprised there's not one right now. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for Korean food next weekend. We're gonna go to Steven Koku in Korea Town. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's my favorite restaurant. I'm dragging my whole family there. <laughs> and they are not city people, but I'm dragging them anyways. Because the bibimbap is so good, it's worth it. Here's Church Street. What? Church Street. Let's cross to the other side. Hey, look, we're back in the good graces of the walking light. Yep. Go for the slush. Yep. I think this restaurant is fairly new right here. Yep. Looks good. It's been here for a little while, but not all that long. Vegetarian equivalent of shawarma? To me, it's. I've never tried shawarma because I just assume it all has meat, you know, but falafel is my go to. Yeah, I guess falafel. It's kind of close. Yeah. Shawarma is like different though because of the texture and the spices, and wow, it's icy. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next? Is it like a mold? That's a good question. What did he say? How is Pita Land? Oh. I don't know because I've never tried it. I bet it's 
probably pretty good. I do you like good pita? When yeah. I was in university, I was obsessed with pita pit. Oh, right. Oh my god. <laughs> there was one on campus. Yeah. I think it was at like College and Spadina. <laughs> and I would go there like every day and get a vegetarian pita with tzatziki and feta cheese. And oh my god, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when North Bay got its first pita pit. It was right before I moved away. Aww. <laughs> so I never really got the chance to uh, try it out. Wait, so you never tried it at all? I think I tried it in another city before, but that was like years before. And I remember it being good, or at least I thought it was good. And then I thought, well, why doesn't North Bay have a pita pit? And then one. finally one opened, and then I moved away. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. but I moved here, so there's a million other better places in Pita Pit. That's true. <laughs> there's burrito, burrito boys here. Yeah, even just for Pita places, there's a million other better ones. That's true. Yeah, like Pita Pit is basically like the McDonald's of Pita yeah. places, right? It so, totally is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're just about at my place, so I'm gonna start wrapping up the video as we pass by the famous Fillmore's. There it is. They never have their big sign lit up anymore. It's kind of, kind of disappointing, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the walk from Union Station and up Young Street all the way to Dundas Square and then eastward here into my neighborhood. Leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts. And be sure to like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my merch store. And be sure to keep checking back. Because as always, I will continue. And you can also find me on Instagram under kcontinuum. And you can find Megan under Instagram on at Megan Sandor. That's right. Her Instagram has been blowing up lately. You should check it. check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all folks. <laughs>